everyone. My name is Otter Wheeler, and today I'll be teaching you about the principles of design. How many of you actually know what the principles of design are with a show of hands? Or partway know what they are? A couple of them, maybe? Can anybody tell me how many principles of design there are? There's five principles of design and five elements of design. And the principles of design follow closely with the elements. They are just a more upped version of the elements. So our first principle that we will go over is balance. Does anybody have an idea of what balance is? You, like when you stand up, you're balanced in one place. So when you wear clothing or when you do art, your artwork or your clothing is balanced. Like this. If you fold this in half, it's going to be symmetrical. Symmetrical is that it's the same on both sides, like this poster. If I hold this poster up and fold it in half, it would be asymmetrical because it's different on both sides. If I turn it around and it's all green on one side and fold it in half, it is then symmetrical because it's the same on both sides. So as you can see in some of these outfits, this shirt would be asymmetrical because if you fold that face in half, it's not going to be exactly the same on both sides. Whereas this swimsuit and this shirt and jeans is going to be the exact same on both sides when you fold it over. Next is proportion. Proportion in art and clothing is the same way. It's what you think of when you think of proportion. Things are, like if you think of a portion of your food, you eat so much meat and so much vegetables. Just like in your bathroom when you walk in, what's the bigger of the two, your bathtub or your toilet? Your bathtub is what you see first in your bathroom. In your living room, you see your couch before you see your chair because your couch is your main focus in your room. So in clothing, it's what your main focus is. It's what you see first in the clothing. It's what's bigger than everything else. It's what they're trying to get you to look at first. Then there's rhythm. Rhythm is the flow of the line. And this would be, in clothing, it's the, you don't tell at first that this is plain and this is striped. You just see it all together because of the good colors in it. So you first see the stripes, and then you see that this is a solid stripe onto the side. In artwork, what does anybody see first when they look at this picture? Anyone? When you look at that picture, what's the first thing you see? I see the blue first because it is the bigger thing of the picture. Although the white is more of the picture, the blue is the bigger color, and it pops to your eye first, which is what clothing does. They put lines and skirts to make you look at the skirt before you look at the shirt or opposite or anything like that. Next is emphasis. Emphasis is one of your easiest ones. It's what you're trying to exaggerate. Have you ever told a story bigger than what it actually is? Like you caught a fish that was 100 pounds when it was really five. That's exactly what this is in clothing. So they're trying to get you to look at this huge headband on our head before the shirt and they're trying to get you to look at this huge rose on her shirt before you see what color it is. And the different colored heels before her shirt that's white. And her colored shirt before her white pants. And that is the emphasis. And in art, if you draw something that is pale and then you put a red right in the middle, you're getting them to look at that red because that's what your focus point is and that's what you want them to see. Next is unity. This is when everything goes together. It's not wearing orange and teal and all these different colors, different colored pants and different colored shirt. It's your whole outfit blends together and just looks nice. This, you do see the blue first, but it doesn't take away from any of the other outfit. And this dress has a lot going on with it, but everything still goes together. So in 4-H, when you're writing a write-up for your fashion review or your clothing selection, you have to use these principles of design, especially when you get up into the higher levels of 4-H, you have to tell them so many principles of design when you're working with your outfit. And so this is to teach kids that don't know as much about it. In my county, I actually help my 4-H group with it and told them all about this and it helps because when the judges up here at State Fair read your write-up, it's all they see is what you're writing. They don't need to talk to you. And so the more you write about these, the better they're going to think about you. So 
So does anybody have any questions today? Yes? Which one do you think is the hardest to explain to a younger 4 The question was, which one do you think is the hardest to explain to a younger 4 -ager? And I do believe it is the balance. The asymmetrical and symmetrical are easy to get mixed up. And a lot of kids don't quite understand it until they're up into the intermediate levels, maybe even senior levels, because it's so hard to understand, even though it's kind of a simple, basic art thing that when you fold something plain in half, it's the same, and when you fold something in half, it's different. And after so long of learning about it, it's easy, but when you're first trying to explain it to a younger kid, it's really hard to get the point across. Any other questions? Yes? All my information actually came from my art classes when I was like sixth grade. We had to do all the elements and principles of design and every year at the beginning of the year she gave us a blank piece of paper and like wrote a sentence out and you had to fill it in and so I slowly got to where I learned really well about them and I've been doing clothing since I was in fourth grade. And so I've been doing this for nine years and so my goal was to teach it to the younger kids so they could do the same thing. Any other questions? All right, thank you.